it here just in case. He's my bouncer. Yeah. Don't want to take anything. Don't, please. I won't be able to do anything. Yeah, I'll be. I don't think so. Okay, so welcome, guys. If they try. Welcome to the Lily Bell. This actually is. How many of you guys have ever heard of the, well, I mean, obviously you guys have heard of the Lily Bell. How many of you guys have heard of the Lily Bell before? Heard of it? Heard of it? Yes. Okay, perfect. How many of you guys have never heard of the Lily Bell before? Nobody. Well, okay. Fine. Um, well, welcome then. Um, the Lily Bell actually is a gem here on the Disneyland Railroad. She's been with us for, uh, well, since 76 is a Lily Bell. Technically, this car actually had a deeper, richer history than just that. And I heard you share, and you remember this car probably when it used to be its original state. Yeah. This car actually is the observation car on the original Main Street train set. So this car debuted with the park in, 1960, in 1955, not 61, 1955. Um, this car rolled out as a part of the Main Street uh, fleet of train cars. Used to be called the Grand Canyon car when the park first opened. Um, all the cars were named after different points of interest along the Santa Fe Railroad line. Um, because for the opening day stuff, Disneyland uh, Railroad was actually sponsored by the Santa Fe Railroad Company. This car, along with its sister cars, is all manufactured in the Burbank studio. So they're actually built there at the studios in Burbank. Uh, you can tell the studio uh, built these things on a budget and that won't had a budget to work with because if you look at the windows, they might look something similar to something you might find somewhere else. <laughs> these are actually school bus windows. Yeah, that was a good The things that originally the car as it stands as when you see a Main Street car are obviously the windows. These lighting fixtures are original from the car, um, as well as the trucks that the car sits on. Um, the only other portion of the car that is original to it, when it first rolled out in 1955, is this number that's painted on the side of the car. This is car 106. Again, uh, the 100 fleet is now currently all gone. We're all sold up, but this is the only car we still retain here at Disneyland for, um, from that set. Um, these cars used to go from Main Street to Main Street. Guests used to call these cars the first class cars. Um, only because the difference between the two different train sets that we used to have operating at the time period um, we used to have two train sets going, um, Retlaw 1, which is this one, the, the Main Street style cars, which are all enclosed, and then Retlaw 2, which was the Frontierland style train. The Frontierland train would leave from Frontierland Station, which is accessible on the other side of the tracks over there, um, which used to be on this side of the tracks, actually. Used to leave from Frontierland Station and come all the way back to Frontierland again. And those are the freight style cars, or the, or the cargo cars, box cars, really. Then, um, uh, this train car would go from Main Street to Main Street. If you ever look at Main Street Station, you'll notice that Main Street has two sets of tracks up there at the main top of the station. Does anybody know why? Why? Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. I'll let you go ahead and do it. You'll do it, the, uh, I will. The Main Street train station actually has two sets of tracks. This station used to have two sets of tracks. The reason being is because since the trains only went from one station to the other, they had to they had to pass by each other um, while they're loading. This train car was terrible at loading and going um, because this car particularly only had one doorway um, that the guests would come through. The other train cars are like it from this fleet would have two doorway loaded, so you literally load from both sides of the, of the cars. The um, the inefficiency of this car though was, and since it was constantly always parked up at Main Street, it had to have a way to have the other train go past it to get to Frontierland. So those are bypass tracks. Uh, we left the current bypass track still up there at Main Street Station, so they're still accessible. You can still see where the other tracks used to be at. Um, however, though, the ones here at New Orleans are currently underneath the old side station and on this side of the track here. So you won't be able to see any of those anymore. They've been ripped off and taken out. Wow. But, um, so since this train was so inefficient at loading, Walt Disney didn't like it as much anymore um, for the fact that it was just, it was a nice car. He loved the way they looked, the feel of the, of the theming he was going for. But unfortunately, though, it was just too hard to get people in and out of the train cars. Plus, in the, about mid-60s, we got something on this side of the, of the railroad. Do you guys know what that was? New Orleans Square? Not New Orleans Square. Actually, it's a dinosaur diorama, and the Grand Canyon scene came oh, in. Right. About 59, we got the Grand Canyon scene, and then about the 60s, uh, about after 65, about right around 65, we got the dinosaur diorama in. The problem with these cars is, is if you're sitting on this side and these benches, you couldn't see out, or you could see out those windows. The guests are sitting on this side, though, couldn't see out that side to see out to what was going on. So Walt didn't like that anymore, so what he ended up doing is he put these back in the roundhouse, only use these for special events and special occasions. He designed the fleet of cars that's in front of us there, where Mark is standing, the, the holiday-style seats, and he used those instead. 
Um, but these cars always remain back in the roundhouse for a little bit, then eventually sold them off and bought up a new engine. This car uh, he kept because he liked the observation deck off the back of it. Um, if you know, he loves and he had a personal admiration of Abraham Lincoln, and I think honestly that's probably why he kept yes. the car. Because Abraham Lincoln is the only was one of the very few presidents to ever do most of his campaigning off the back of a, of a train car. And so he always thought it had a nice, cool presidential feel to it. He also always wanted to have his own private parlor car. Unfortunately, though, it never came into fruition. In 1966, uh, Walt Disney passed away, but um, had shared with Lillian Disney his ideas for this train car. And so when the opportunity arose in 1974, um, when the Imagineers and the Roundhouse team were talking about doing something special for the bi upcoming bicentennial celebration of our nation, um, Lillian Disney jumped on board and actually helped to fund the project, being the sole, um, basically the biggest shareholder of the time period. She wanted to fund the project personally. So she helped to design this train, redesign this train car. Um, when it was sitting back in the roundhouse, this car fell underneath dire state, so the, there's wood rot and other things going on with it. So the Imagineer team had to actually rebuild this car pretty much from scratch. The only part of it that's original, again, is the trucks, the car, and the windows and things they were able to remove and replace back into the car itself. But the original woodwork and stuff, unfortunately, is gone. But the cool part about that story is that even though they had to rebuild most of it, if you look at the pictures of the original train cars from Main Street, it hasn't changed at all. This train yeah. car, the outline, the outlining of the car itself is the same. So even though I say this car is about 61 years old, um, technically the design of the car itself is 61, but the car, the make of the car, is, uh, the wooden stuff is not original at all. But with that said, that's still really cool that we can we can really pull this off again. So Lily does he had the hand of designing the car. You can see her touches all the way throughout the entire thing. Uh, in 1976, this car, on July 4th, 1976, this car rolled out as the Lily Bell, the presidential parlay car of the Disneyland Railroad line. There you are. Um, if you look around the car itself, we actually have uh, touches of Main Street throughout the entire thing, since it is a Victorian era style car. Um, this car actually um, has the same theming to it. Um, look at the carpeting that's underneath your feet. Uh, Lily does he love floral designs. Uh, love the Victorian era time period. So the carpeting that you're standing on, or that you're sitting on right now, actually, is the original piece of carpeting from Walt's apartment. Um, it's the last piece of carpeting we have from the apartment. And if you look down the trail of it, there actually is a uh, hidden Mickey all the way through it. So there's a hidden Mickey there, hidden Mickey there, hidden Mickey there, hidden Mickey there oh, the entire length of the car. There's even one in the middle, you just can't really see it as well. There's one right there. Yeah, there's several. Yeah, it's right here. They were yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, um, the woodwork and stuff like that. The wood, the when they put in the carpeting and stuff, it was really kind of cool. Also, to the car, you may have noticed this is actually Honduran mahogany, and then we have celestial stained glass windows at the very top of it to kind of finish her off. Again, these fixtures are original from the car itself. Um, because this car doesn't get very good ventilation, the fans were installed to make sure that we get um, air circulation through here. Uh, because we're not running or operating right now, we have no way for the alternator of the train car in front of us to power the car. So the battery would just die out if I had it on, but we could technically turn on the fan if I really needed to. Yep. Um, back here in the very back, it's a time piece. Not a time piece, it's like a piece of history. Um, does anybody know what this is? <laughs> I already told you. I'm not going to say Somebody told me one time that a pin trading board is not a pin trading board. <laughs> <laughs> is it a piece of the original chairs that were in here? No. So what this is, actually, is it's a piece of artwork that Lillian Disney picked up on one of her travels. But um, I, there's two different thoughts behind it, and so I'll share both. Um, one is that this is a modesty screen. Um, does anybody know what those are typically used for? Early time period of Victorian era, it was not seemly for a woman to smoke. So they would take this and put this in front of themselves in order to smoke, to the act of smoking. Um, that way nobody can see that behind. I've also been told it's a modesty screen that was used since women's makeup was made out of wax. Um, their faces would literally melt if it got really hot. So they would typically put this in front, that way they can cover themselves while they are refixing themselves. Mm. Also, this is known as a smoking screen. What that would be like is if you were to smoke or anything like that, you'd blow smoke into this uh, piece of fabric and that way then the smoke wouldn't get on the rest of your car or the guests that are around you. 
Um, several different thoughts behind it, but it is a nice piece of artwork, and that's pretty much why Lillian Disney picked it up. It's an artwork piece that she liked with, on one of her travels. But it's, it's kind of a time piece era thing that we have in the car. Walt's DNA is in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs>